Hello everyone, welcome to Media Unlocked. I'm Brian. Today for a review we have the DSLR dashboard application. Um, this app basically works as a remote control for your camera. Uh, you can also use it for your phone. You'll need a USB OTG cable for that. Uh, for both actually, for both your camera and your phone. Uh, it's a really, uh, really cool application. Um, pretty much it goes from your camera to uh, your dashboard. All your functions are there. Uh, your ISO, aperture, white balance, everything else is on there. Uh, it's just really nice. Um, there's uh, multiple ways that you can use it. Um, and it, it's just good for, for having a um, just sort of a separate monitor like if your camera's on a tripod or something and you need to step away and maybe uh, rearrange something in your shot without having to go back and forth from your camera uh, to your shot. Um, and you can basically use it while you're rearranging everything so that way you know everything's in frame. Anyway, let's uh, take the next step here and we'll show you how to, how to set everything up and, uh, and give you a little close up as to how it looks. Uh, we are using the uh, DSLR dashboard with a uh, Nexus tablet. Uh, we have only tested it uh, with the Android, um, but supposedly you can use it with other um, like iP iPods, iPhones, stuff like that. Um, but to get started with it, you want to connect your OTG USB adapter into the tablet. Uh, from there, just your basic USB cable. And to there. And then to your camera. Now you're going to want to make sure that your camera is turned off. Uh, otherwise, you'll just get a blank screen whenever you engage uh, the dashboard. So, okay. and click on that, turn your camera on. We've got a little display of all of our uh, gear here. Um, it's pretty much just what you're looking at through your camera. Um, you've got all your, your basic, your layout and all your functions here. You've got uh, for photo usage up here. You've got an autofocus, which is really cool. The only, I guess, kind of tricky thing about the autofocus is you can't really tell if it's on or not. And you can control it from down here. So let's see if we can. Yeah, I see where it's starting to go out of focus there and then uh, you can bring it back. So that's, that's a pretty cool feature. Um, the screen is a little bit more uh, distorted, so sometimes you might want to check your focus through your camera first and then adjust from the monitor after that. But again, part of the, one of the downsides is that is you can't really tell if the autofocus is on or off. I mean, maybe if it changed color or something from green to red or something, um, then you've got your record, obviously. Uh, down here, you've got um, your aperture and uh, your shutter speed ratings. Uh, to change those, basically, it's just you just tap on it, choose what you want. Same thing with your aperture. Um, So pretty cool there. Um, over on this side, we've got um, got your ISO speed there. You know, if you can just scroll up or down uh, depending on uh, what rating you want. Um, this is for your white balance. Uh, so you can also do a custom white balance if you choose, but uh, I've yet to really mess with that. Um, over here in this section, you've got some zooms. If you want to do a quick auto zoom real quick, 
Um, this gives you a live view settings, uh, filters, you know, for grayscale or uh, Sophia, stuff like that. Um, this is a little something that we still need to work around with. Um, it's also something you really want to do in post, but if you were just messing around with it, um, these functions do not seem to transfer through the camera. Um, so I don't even really mess with those. Um, <clears throat> Up here, you've got some uh, reviews. Uh, this is also you know, just some check mark stuff that you can go over. Don't really use it a whole lot. Um, and you've got your viewfinder or um, your preview options here. Um, report, raw, raw, uh, you've got your option for raw photos, JPEGs. Um, and just straight camera and you just back out all of it. Um, you also have the time lapse uh, feature up here which we haven't really messed around with a whole lot. Uh, you can also take it uh, to more full screen. If you want to do that you can also set your um, ratings also down there as well. Um, and just back back out again. So you just hit that uh, again. You give it a nice quick test there, and uh, you take a, a photo. Um, the only annoying part of that is after you take a picture, um, it does not go back, so you have to go back up to uh, your preview to get your screen back on. Maybe a way around that, um, just haven't tinkered around with it enough. But it's a minor gripe. Uh, with the record feature, you know, there's no issues there. You just get her going and tap it back off and uh, stays online that way. So again, you know, once you take a photo, it blacks out. Again, so you can't do that because then it just takes you right back out again. So it's a couple of, uh, and I'm totally screwing it up. Well, or you can do that, but uh, that's kind of a gripe there. I don't really like that it does that. Um, it should take you right back into uh, your live mode there. But again, maybe there's, there's something else that uh, we haven't figured out yet that will do that. Otherwise, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool addition uh, to your arsenal. Um, you also, again, can use it uh, with uh, your phone or iPad. Uh, um, it's not just um, Android exclusive. Um, it'd be really, really cool with your phone because uh, that way you could go hands-free because as of right now we're, we're connected to um, the Nexus tablet to the camera and there's not a lot of leeway um, but it'd be really really neat uh, with a phone because that way you can just walk around hands-free say if you're on a photo shoot or something and it'd be even nice you know if you've got a cameraman and uh, you know he's doing your settings but maybe you wanted it to look a little bit different you can go in yourself and and change your shutter speeds or something if you didn't like the way uh, the camera was set up or how your cameraman was setting it up himself. Um, but yeah, having a, a wireless wireless way of doing it is really, really nice. Um, other than that, there's a lot of other uh, bells and whistles here that we still need to tinker around with. Um, but for the most part, uh, it looks like something that we'll be utilizing uh, quite frequently. I'd also like to mention that there's a little bit of a lag uh, with the dashboard, the monitor, and if you're jerking it around a whole lot, there's maybe about a two and a half, three second uh, lag time. Not really a major issue, but uh, if you slow yourself down a little bit, if you're, it, uh, it helps work that out. Uh, again, not kind of a minor gripe. Uh, we've also messed around a little bit with the DSLR controller. 
Uh, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, except the DSLR controller will cost you, I think it's around say, $9.99, uh, whereas the dashboard is a free app. Pretty much the same functionalities. Uh, so having messed around with it, I mean, I would, I would go with the dashboard in the end. Um, it seems to, to me, it seems like it has a couple of more options. It pretty much still functions the same way. Uh, but and again, it's free. So, I mean, you really don't have anything to lose uh, with downloading the app. Um, I also had mentioned earlier that you can use it wirelessly, which, um, would seem to be a really, really useful way of using the application. That's something I would like to try personally in the future. Uh, you will have to have an adapter for that, um, depending on what camera you use, Canon, Nikon, whatever, you can find those online. Uh, we'll include that in the description bar um, if you want to do a little research on that. Uh, but that seems like that would just be really cool depending on, depending on the situation that you were in. If you're in some tight spots or something and you need to set your camera off to the side and you or your cameraman wasn't able to monitor the camera itself while it was recording um, or taking pictures of one of the two um, that would just be really really uh, handy handy way of using the application um, we will also include in the description um, a write-up of the application um, if you'd like to do a little bit more reading on it, get a little bit more insight to the app itself. But other than that, aside from just further tinkering with the application, which we'll plan on doing, um, I can see us utilizing this application quite a bit. Uh, so other than that, check us out on uh, Facebook under David D. Images. We're also on Twitter at Media Unlocked and online at MediaUnlocked.net. Hope you guys have enjoyed this review and if you check out the write-up, I hope that gives you a little bit more insight as well. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys next time. Later.